You are looking live at pictures of Apple's new iTunes software, which Wall Street Journal personal te technology columnist Walt Mossberg calls a pleasure to use. iTunes is a program that millions of people use to manage their media, and the latest version, iTunes 11, became available just last week. Hi, welcome to Digits. My name is George Stoll, and joining me is the aforementioned personal tech columnist for the Wall Street Journal, Walt Mossberg. So, Wal Sir Walter, how are you doing today? I'm good, George. How are you? I'm doing fine. So, what did you like about iTunes? Well, I, you know, before, let me, just, let me just say something. I think a lot of people uh, uh, are so familiar with it that they don't really realize the scope of this thing. It's one of the five or ten probably most used pieces of software in the world, even on Windows computers, uh, especially on Windows computers. And you may not own anything else by Apple, but lots of people use iTunes, whether they ever buy anything from the iTunes store or not. They use it to organize and manage their music and their and their videos and uh, so people are really familiar with it and, and over the years an they've added that's an excellent point to keep in mind and, and the reason why Apple's got to be cautious in the way that it uh, upgrades it absolutely right um, they've been you know Apple wants people to continue to like it and to continue to feel like it's familiar territory but uh, over the last, uh, you know, uh, seven or eight years, it has gotten a lot of additional features. It's gotten kind of bloated. It's slowed down. Uh, and so they really went and did the biggest overhaul since, uh, according to them, since 2003 in the, in the product, which was the year they, they expanded it to Windows and added the store. And what they basically have done is to clean it up and speed it up. So uh, it's more colorful. Uh, uh, some of the uh, long scrolling lists uh, 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 that were in the program have been hidden. You can, you can bring it back if you want, but that's not, no longer the default. If you go to music, you're basically seeing all music stuff. If you go to movies or TV shows or podcasts, you're seeing all stuff related to that. And, um, and they've added a, a, a few cool new features. So, for veteran iTunes users, how disconcerting might the new version be? Well, I think for average folks that use it in the, in the most typical ways, I don't think it'll be very disconcerting at all. There's a little learning curve. They do give you a little, uh, when you install it, they give you a screen pointing out some of the new uh, buttons and things. And there are two vi uh, tutorial videos, if you want to watch them, that come right with it. But um, I don't think it's, it's very hard to learn. It's, it, the fundamentals are the same. Uh, there are some new things. For instance, if you click on an album cover, uh, a, a, a very attractive panel uh, suddenly zooms out, shows all the songs on the album. Uh, it's kind of color matched to the, to the cover, uh, the dominant co co color of the album cover. And um, they've uh, done things uh, uh, like put all the controls and different like adding to playlists and things right in a button next to the song to make it uh, easier to get to. They also have a feature called Up Next where you can see all the songs that are coming up next in your mm -hmm. playlist or in whatever uh, 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 songs you've selected to play. And you can elevate a song right to the top of the list with one click if you want to suddenly hear something different. That's a nice feature. It's called Expanded View. Uh, it's called Up Next. Uh, they also have uh, improved the mini player. Uh, some, a lot of people know what that is. It's a small version of uh, iTunes that coexists with your other windows. It used to just be you know, a, a place where you could stop and start and skip songs. Now it has the Up Next feature. It has a search bar in it. And yet it's a little bit smaller than the mini player was before. But yeah, uh, yeah. And there's just a whole bunch of other things like that. You mentioned them in the story that there's still a couple of flaws that need to be worked out. Real quickly, what were a couple of the ones that you felt that, that could be refined a little bit more? Well, there are a couple of, uh, there are a couple of uh, omissions and bugs. For instance, uh, iTunes has for years had a way to uh, find duplicate songs and get rid of them. Uh, they didn't have time to get that into this version uh, because they were overhauling the whole thing. There will, they say there will be a, a minor update shortly that will uh, restore that. I found uh, uh, some of the album covers didn't show up. 
They've already done a uh, minor update that'll be released, in the, uh, they say, in the next few days. And I tried it, and it fixed that bug. So they're, they're going to straighten out uh, the two or three things that I thought were uh, either missing or were, were bugs in the program. I, I want to say one other thing really quickly that I think is important for people to keep in mind. You know, iTunes has been about downloading music, not so much streaming it. Uh, this new version lets you stream without downloading anything you've ever bought from them uh, hmm. or if you're in this thing called iTunes Match where all your songs can go up in the cloud. You can stream all those without downloading them and that puts Apple a little closer to the streaming camp without giving up their downloading uh, uh, function which has been their hallmark. So I think that's worth noting as well. Interesting shift. Thanks a lot, Walt. Insightful as always.